we are live. Welcome to Ms. Marvel Episode 5 Thoughts. This episode is called Time and Again. Now, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. Brief off topic, Julie Nolke just found a delightful way to comment on Roe v. Wade in her recent video explaining the pandemic to my past self, Seven. Also, I will be watching Thor 4 tomorrow night, so the review may not be up until Monday. I'm going to try to make it early in the day. On to the episode. Yeah, so we open on the newsreel. Other people have already pointed out it's British, but like criticizing the British. So that's a little, yeah, you know, but since this is made for a Western audience, maybe they worried that if it was like an Indian of a Muslim person, you know, explaining the context, people might be, you know, might, might not be as open to, to that. Now, and there, you know, Gandhi is brought up. Very exciting chase in the forest. And yeah, this is the penultimate episode of a Disney Plus MCU show. So it's the backstory and or flashback episode. You know, WandaVision and Moon Knight did this. Possibly others. I, yeah, I, I don't remember all of them in detail. I quite like the relationship between Aisha and Hassan. Shall I just call you hungry? Now that's a dad joke. He must be a psychic. He must have known he was going to be a dad. And we go forward in time. They have a baby together. And we see the baby playing with the bangle. And let's, yeah, so, you know, originally Aisha was with Najma. You know, she was completely down for, you know, we're going to get the bangles. We're going to return to the Noor dimension, but now, you know, she has a baby, she loves her husband, so, yeah. And I thought it was a strong moment when, you know, they get some help and Hassan is reluctant to accept it, calling it charity, and we get some background on what you seek is seeking you. Najma finds Aisha, threatens her, and does later go on to kill her, and... Yeah, we see, you know, it was Aisha who made it, so the Kamala went there, and she helps. We see the trail, and I am not 100% sure if the whole time travel, you know, once Kamala goes back to the present, it doesn't look like very much time has passed, because, like... Or was everyone in stasis? I Yeah, I'm a little confused by that. Other, other people have pointed out that it doesn't seem consistent whether they're MCU time travel. That's true. I'm just trying to figure out, like, did time freeze for all of them? Or did it kind of happen in, like, a flash? Because, like, you know, like, if our brains can perceive information extremely fast under the right circumstances. In your dreams, you can experience, like, days or months, even though you're only sleeping for hours. So, yeah. I, I... That that bugs me more than the incons... I, at this point, I kind of feel like the MCU is making up time travel rules as they go along. You know, Endgame says that it creates a, a different timeline. Then Loki introduces the TVA, which does... Does that mean that the Ancient One doesn't know about the TVA? Or else why would she be worried? And no TVA interfere... Does that mean that the TVA knew that the Ancient One would warn Smart Hulk and that he would accept what he was told? Even though he did... I mean, he barely knew... He, he knew that there were wizards, sorcerers, but he never met the Ancient One before. Like, this is a universe full of people who, you know trick other people, um, then, you know, in what if there was that thing of, what was it called, an, an absolute point in time, and just, 
if yeah anyway let's see yeah you know we see the veil Kamala uses her powers to help people get safely away and Ajima closes it Cameron gets powers and the various you know so yeah at this point the clandestine the only is he technically clandestine I'm gonna go with the only clandestine left is Kamran and yeah some people have pointed out that was a very underwhelming villain presence and yeah I mean I think at this point it's just kind of the MCU Disney Plus show thing you know they they don't handle the villains all that well I guess Moon Knight did fairly decent because certainly he was there from the start and didn't go away until the end and he did take part in the climax which it does not appear that the like I, I doubt that Cameron Cameron is gonna turn evil in the last episode so the you know like if the other and if the other clandestine were still alive maybe he would to impress Najma but they're gone you know he will find out that they're gone it's not like Kamala is gonna say no no, no they're still out there she's gonna tell them the truth or someone is you know so yeah it, it looks like the the finale I guess it's the DODC versus Kamran and Kamala so when they haven't been a huge presence on the show up until now anyway And Muniba realizes Kamala is that light girl. And I think it was just a gender who pointed out would have been nice if what Muniba saw was Kamala using the powers to help people. And and really, I mean, it was a, it was a real gimme. She used the powers to help people like two minutes before Muniba shows up. So just have Muniba show up, you know. I mean, you could even like you could have it be that yeah I think we already know when when Kamala uses her powers or again you could cut it in earlier you know have Muniba you know oh yeah you can find her via the phone why am I only now finding out about this she heads there we see the the whole thing you know if you don't want Muniba to appear before after Najma is gone well just have her walk in and see and and say you know and and yeah make it clear that she saw but yeah anyway and Kamala gives Nan a photo. And now that Muniba knows about the powers, Kamala uses them in front of her to say goodbye to Red Dagger, which I guess means they're nixing the love triangle and he's going to show up later, it's, which I'm fine with. I didn't really need... Well, I, I guess technically it was going to be a love square because there is technically still a love triangle because it appears that Bruno has feelings for Kamala and she thinks of him as a friend. She likes Cameron, so there's, there's yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I if, did they run out of money? I, I didn't think it was particularly, like, when Kamala uses her powers in front of Maniba, you know, like, we can hear what's going on, and then we see her land near him. So, okay, yeah, she did the, you know, she created a, yeah, she did the thing. She creates a, a platform, jumps on that, jumps creates another platform and such but it was completely off screen like we only hear it yeah i don't know it, it just it felt a little weird to me we see muniba's reaction to it but that by itself wasn't I, I didn't really feel like that was like if that was the first time she saw the powers but she yeah she just saw the power anyway and let's say, yeah, and there are various theories about you know why did the clandestine die when they touched the the veil, you know. I don't really have anything to to add to the. Let's see, I think it was New Rock Stars, and probably Screen Crush, that that theorized and yeah you know that they made good videos on this episode so. And yeah, so we find out Muniba really was a rebel following Bon Jovi. And like for a second, you know, she says, Nani, don't put. I think Nani is the, the it means grandmother. It doesn't, it's not her name. I, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I legitimately don't remember all these names. It, that, it has nothing to do 
with them being names that I'm not used to hearing. I'm just not great at remembering th this many names. Uh, let's see. The, the, yeah, Muniba, you know, First Nani is like, uh, you know, you followed Bruce Springfield around the country, and, you know, Muniba is like, don't fill my, my daughter's head with those lies. And for a second, it's like, ah, oh, she's gonna claim that there was absolutely, you know, I was never a rebel. No, 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 it's Bon Jovi she was following. And I, I do legitimately, like, that, was that there in the first episode? I think there, or the second episode. It was it was early in this show. No, yeah, the first episode had Muniba and uh, I forget the name, but I think Abu means father. So Kamala's Abu, you know, expressed that they still desire each other. But the second episode, we're told, oh yeah, they they love Bon Jovi, and you know, when they were younger, they met because of Slippery When Wet. Now. Let's see. And another scene between Cameron and Bruno. And, like, Cameron admits, I, le I genuinely thought Brian was your name the whole time. No, I, I, I get it, you know. I, I lost my parents, too. It's fine, all right. Dad's late. No need to be in this about it. And Cameron uses the powers against the drone. The episode ends once again with damage control doing something important. So that legitimately, I don't know if that was a studio note or, yeah. Jesse Gender spoke to the depiction of the partition better than I could. Go watch her video. Now, yeah, so another MCU show, MCU Disney Plus show with a villain problem. I, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing the finale, maybe it's going to be Kamala and or Kamran fighting DODC. Maybe they're going to focus on an emotion-based climax, not an action climax. I mean, we know that they're not going to stop DODC. DODC are in She-Hulk. Maybe it's going to be a fight between good guys that ends with them realizing they're on the same side. And let's see. Yeah, so I'm guessing the reason we spent as much as we did of this episode in the past, I'm not complaining, was so we would sympathize more with those hurt by the partition since, you know, now we got to know some of them not a bad idea. You know, I, I know some, some people don't like when fiction does that. I think it's extremely effective. You know, worked here, worked in Titanic. I'm sure there are other examples, but those are the first to come to mind. It's just, what, what is that thing? Um, tragedy plus time equals comedy. And, you know, tragedy t timed a lot of people is a lot harder for us to relate to you know the moment that you make it about a few specific people that we care about yeah and they're both you know like she's she's really badass and, and gutsy and he has a very strong moral center you know you can understand why they fall for each other and they are like sometimes the MCU has a bit of a problem with some of the lead characters being a little boring they they try to make up for it with side characters being more interesting but yeah legitimately these are two like i would watch if if disney decides to make an entire like spin off of just you know aisha and i'm going to scroll up so i can read the aisha and hassan's relationship together i'd watch that you know they are yeah they're interesting. And let's see. So, yeah, some people have said that, you know, it wasn't a surprise that Najma killed Aisha once she was introduced in the past. I don't think it was supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be that kind of, you know, the the um, uh, the, the classic Greek tra tragedy thing. Like, you can see what it's going to end up, you know. Because we knew, like, she claimed when she talked to Kamala, that was the last time we ever saw her again. You know, so the, the, yeah, you know, the moment that Najma finds Aisha, we're supposed to put two and two together and say, oh, she must have killed her. You know, I, I, I don't think it was supposed to be, it, you know, it, it becomes this kind of like, oh, what's the word? 
yeah, this this thing of like we knew that it had to be something like that, and now we see it. Way too little Nakia in and and Bruno in this episode and last week's. Here's hoping the finale has more. I do love this episode, as I loved all before it. I'm probably gonna love the finale. I will grant it looks like the finale will be rushed, as usual, for MCU Disney Plus shows. I did briefly want to say, I think it was Sean Chandler Talks Movies, or Talks about something like that. Sean, yeah, fellow YouTuber, I think he was the one who said that, you know, now that we're doing the globetrotting thing, the show, you know, the, the show's strength used to be that it was about this teenager, you know, trying to come to terms with their situation, and now we have this globe trotting, so the focus is no longer on that. I think the idea is that we're getting more of a sense of the generational thing. You know, in this episode, we straight up meet Aisha and spend longer with her and learn more about her and see her in more varied situations than when Najima was talking to, to Kamala about what happened during the partition for them, for the for the clandestine. And in the episode before this one, we met, you know, we, we yeah, we, we see the relationship between Muniba and her mother. We see, you know, yeah, we see Muniba being a little different towards Kamala, you know, maybe kind of remembering what it's like to have a mother that doesn't really that doesn't fully support the way you are kind of thing. We met the, uh, yeah, just in general, you know, and yeah, and we went to Pakistan. So we see what, you know, and, and uh, as far as I could tell, the last time they were there, like Kamala vaguely recalls it. She doesn't, you know, yeah, so, so, it it adds texture and layers to the the whole thing of her trying to figure out you know which does she belong to because she does still you know she she goes to karachi and she isn't an ugly american tourist you know so that still is part of her that is still something that informs who she is defines her identity you know like i don't i don't i think they were I, I don't think that the, these two episodes were a huge step down. And but but you know once again I recommend uh, Sean Chandler's video on uh, these episodes. Ah, uh, let's see. Was there anything else that I wanted to say? I I could understand like there there's a lot of exposition in. The, uh, let's see, I guess more the episode before this one, not so much this one. This one was more show, don't tell. Right, I, yeah, I did just briefly want to, so the Illuminantes talked about Aisha. One of them said, I heard she killed someone. I mean, maybe someone figured that it might be Aisha who killed the British soldier, because that got, obviously that was discovered at some point. You know, and one of the Illuminati said, I heard she had a second family, the clandestine, because, you know, who was that woman she was talking to? And I think one of them said she abandoned her family. And that's, you know, sadly, sometimes when when someone dies unexpectedly, you know, other people think, oh, well, where did they go? Why are they not coming back to us? You know, it's, you know, the reason she didn't go with her family on the train was because she was killed. I think, were those all of the, those were the ones I remember about the Illuminati. So, yeah, but, yeah, you know, they did a good job of, like, yeah, I forget who it was, but someone pointed out there's some really great foreshadowing in this show. There's a there's a lot of things that are set up, and now we're seeing what they really meant. So yeah, 
I, yeah, that was absolutely everything that I had to say. So I will catch you next week for the finale.